Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer, and this video is to share some information and some insight into a particular fixed star. Now, the fixed star that I've been drawn to talk about is called Algol, and we find this in the Perseus constellation. Now, the reason why I feel Algol is of particular interest is going to become clear as I start to share some of the energies and some of the themes that are being sort of introduced and brought forward through this transit. But um, it lies at 26 degrees of Taurus. So we've already had Jupiter conjoining with Algol earlier in the week. Tomorrow, the 16th of May, the sun is going to reach this point in the chart. And then further on into mid-July, we're going to have Mars, we'll meet Algol, and then Uranus. So these are all very powerful, powerful activations. These are powerful planets that are aligning with this energy. And whenever a planet aligns with a fixed star in the chart, it sort of allows the energy of that fixed star to come through and work with the planet in question. So whenever we have a sun conjunction with a fixed star, the, sh the sun is really shining a light on that, on that fixed star energy, sort of empowering it, fortifying it, strengthening it. Of course, Mars is going to energise and motivate and Uranus is going to potentially destabilize it if it's in its more um, sort of negative or weaker expression. But as Uranus is about awakening and breaking through, it can also help us wake, awaken to some of the energies that have perhaps either been hidden or become stuck, particularly through Taurus, which is fixed Earth. So this is about the energy being shaken up to come to the surface so that we can start to work with it and transmute if necessary. So Algol is renowned in astrology and in myth for being a very malefic star. It's often described as the demon star and there is a lot of fear associated with this star and the story behind it. Um, and this is mainly because it is linked to Medusa. So the story of Medusa, the Gorgon, the monster and um, the witch who had um, snakes for hair who could you know, turn you into stone by merely gazing upon you. And so, you know, through the stories, through the history, through the films, the movies, you know, the books that we've been sort of um, introduced to, if you will, you know, we have come to really fear and despise this horrific, ugly, scary, dangerous um, and violent female but Medusa wasn't always a monster and this is the part of the story that is often either um, overlooked completely or sidelined or hidden away and it is my feeling that with this activation you know some more um, of her story if you like is going to come forward and of course this is very metaphoric because you know, Medusa was a very fair maiden. She was beautiful, she was kind, she was compassionate. She was actually a high priestess, so deeply intuitive, very powerful in her own way, in her own right, in her original form. And she had devoted her life in service to Pallas Athena. So as part of that, as part of worshipping and serving Athena, um, she had to be chaste, she had to be pure, she had to be virginal, and she was absolutely committed and devoted to doing that and to being so. So, you know, we start off with this beautiful woman who, you know, absolutely embodies the divine feminine, all that is positive and beautiful about the feminine and the female. And then one day Poseidon comes along and is completely enthralled and entranced and captured by her beauty and her chastity and when she rejects his advances um, he violates and rapes her now unfortunately you know this is the first part of the story where Medusa has already been betrayed by you know somebody a god who was you know to all intents and purposes someone that she would revere that she would admire so you know, the, the first stage of the story is there's already betrayal. 
disappointment, disempowerment, over um, disempowerment. So then when Athena finds out what has happened, she doesn't believe Medusa. She doesn't believe that, you know, Poseidon would do something and she like this. She believes that Medusa has seduced Poseidon and encouraged him to do what he did. So she um, throws her out. She banishes her. And she also turns her into this monster. So where she had long, beautiful hair, her hair becomes snakes. She becomes ugly and terrifying. And she is forced to live in isolation on an island, you know, far away from home where anybody who dare comes, who dare sort of cross her path is effectively murdered through being turned into stone. So, you know, this is the second act of betrayal. So, you know, she, yes, she becomes the monster, but actually is she the victim in this story? And is she the victim who hasn't had an opportunity to share her story, to share her voice and to be heard and to be seen? You know, all we have ever seen about Medusa is how horrifying and dangerous and terrifying she was. But, you know, it is, it's really interesting to me that this star is being activated and this story is coming forward because it is very much about you know, the female who has been persecuted, who has been um, mistreated, who has been violated, and whose story has been completely twisted at the end of the day. And we've been led to believe one thing about her, which part of the story, of course, is true because she was dangerous. She was violent. You know, she was angry and she was terrifying. But there are always two sides to the story that, you know, we are perhaps being asked to really consider, you know, when we are being told stories, when we are being shown information, you know, what we read about in our history books, what we see on the TV, you know, what version of the story is true and, and what have we actually sort of bought into that perhaps isn't quite the real version of events. But of course, that isn't the only theme that steps forward with this with this story of Algol and this activation. You know, we're being invited here to really consider these opposing forces of light and dark because Medusa was both good and evil. You know, the goddess and the monster, the victim and the villain. You know, can we be both? Is it possible to be both? And certainly what has been coming up for me a great deal lately is there is a lot of shadow and parts of you know the self that perhaps we have been ashamed of or fearful of or just not willing to look at for many different reasons because it triggers and brings up emotions that are deeply uncomfortable to look at and to feel but these are parts of us that are desperate to be reintegrated to come home to us if you will because often you know, where we feel like part of us is missing, it's actually the part that we've rejected and abandoned and banished away that is trying to come back home. So again, you know, with this activation, it is to me speaking of the parts of source energy which express themselves in very opposing ways, light and dark, good and evil, but there is a real sort of calling for those both to come back in together, to be integrated, to acknowledge that the light cannot exist without the dark, but likewise the dark needs the light as well. So they are parts of the same energy, just in opposing expressions. So that's the first sort of theme that comes forward here. We've also got, you know, if we think of Medusa's head, Medusa um, in life, was very powerful in her maiden form, in her sort of um, light, good goddess form at the beginning of the story. She then became even more powerful as she was transformed into this monster. But when she was beheaded and slain by Perseus, who managed to avoid her gaze by using his shield to deflect her look, so he was therefore able to sneak up on her and cut her head off, when she um, was decapitated, her head, she didn't actually die and her head retained its power. In fact, its head her head became even more powerful. So she lived on as a weapon and was used both as a way to protect 
those who had power over this head and who own this head and also as a really um, very powerful killing machine for anyone who used her head against the other. So the head is very much sort of integral to the story and the eyes being particularly a big part and also the snake hair. So if we think about the eyes, the eyes being the window to the soul and the fact that, you know, anybody who looked at Medusa or who was looked at by her became petrified, became paralysed, was unable to move forward. You know, it, it feels that with and through this activation you know we are being invited to really consider what is it that we have perhaps not wanted to or not been able to look at square on you know straight in the eye for fear of what might happen you know fear can be very debilitating it can really keep us completely frozen um, and fixed in our tracks, unable to move forward, unable to grow because we are so scared of what might happen. But with this star and its energy coming forward, it's a really good time to actually sort of say to yourself, you know, what is the worst that can happen? And when you truly look at your fears directly, are they as scary as you thought they were going to be? Or is there a way in you know, in the same way that Perseus did, is there a way that you can look at your fears in from a slightly different angle and perhaps um, in doing so deflect or reflect the potency of them and the influence of them and in that way release yourself from them. And it's through releasing this fear, which is very much coming up strongly in so many of us at this time, when we're able to release it, we can transmute it and we can then be free. So it is very much about seeing and um, looking at the monster or what we've been scared of and seeing it for what it really is. And it might not be as bad as you thought. It's also a really good opportunity to rewrite the story um, around your fears. And of course, with the head being in focus here, you know, our head is very much about the ego. It's also about our mind, our thoughts, and we can get very much trapped in our beliefs, in our thoughts, in our understanding, in our thinking and mindset. And really, as with Medusa, her head was cut off. Sometimes, you know, we have to let go of, of our beliefs and our understandings and what we thought was true in order to set ourselves free to be able to move forward. So again, you know, there's a really nice sort of symbolism and imagery coming through there. There's also, you know, the idea that this might be a time that we're moving through. And I would say possibly more so in July when Uranus and Mars come around to activate Algol, but a real time where we might actually be losing our minds or finding out information and ideas that are going to blow our mind apart, um, which sounds quite dramatic. But, you know, again, if we're starting to see things in a different light, you know, we're going to have a different understanding of our world and our reality and perhaps, you know, a shift in what we have been told or believed is to be true, what we've read about, what we've been conditioned or programmed to believe, perhaps. So, you know, there's also potentially issues of people losing their minds or losing their heads. You know, mental health issues could come up quite strongly here. And just, a, you know, a sense of people are not going to necessarily being able to cope with the information that's coming through. But sometimes, you know, we have to let go of our ego and we have to let go of fixed belief systems in order to have a higher connection to, you know, who we truly are, to our higher selves, to the more divine aspects of ourselves. And again, you know, this is possibly a really good opportunity to be able to do that. And, you know, and again, you know, there are many energies, many astrological events, many fixed star activations that are really supporting this process. But again, you know, this is just another piece in that puzzle. We are reminded of, you know, the strength and the potential that comes through transformation and that change and transformation and transition is not always a bad thing that actually you can come out stronger, potentially in different forms sometimes. And um, certainly, you know, this applies for Medusa. 
but that there is huge growth and transformation and also in challenging times and hardships and sometimes things that you know we come across that we find really difficult to deal with if we're able to see them from a different perspective you know we can see that actually there's a huge potential and opportunity for growth through that challenge through that hardship and again you know this is what Algol is here to teach us i'm also reminded very much of the um sort of the crossover or the correlation the synergy between sedna and her story and medusa because of course i've talked about sedna fairly recently in a video but sedna was betrayed by the person that she relied on and looked up to most her father she had to let go of what she had always known, what she had relied on. And through that um, letting go, through that betrayal, she was forced to transform into a much more powerful version of herself and um, you know, become the goddess of the sea. As Sedna is moving into Gemini, it feels that you know, through Gemini, which is very much the voice, information, speech, communication, it feels like a lot of these um sort of situations where the female has been disempowered, she has been betrayed, she has been portrayed to be something that perhaps she is not. You know, there is there is a new opportunity for that um, energy and for those stories to be heard. There is, a, you know, and there is new courage coming through to speak up. Again, you know, there is a lot of synergy here with the witch wound, which I've talked about before in previous videos, where, um, women in times gone by who were very gifted healers, who were powerful oracles, who had, you know, the power um, of divining what was going to happen, who could use herbs, who could, you know, talk to spirits and unseen beings because of their power they were banished, they were ostracized, you know, they were made out to be dangerous creatures dangerous women to be feared and so we have you know through all our stories our fairy tale tales of the witch being an evil dark scary woman you know who used her powers for ill means and ill gains where actually the truth is the polar opposite and again you know with Sedna moving into Gemini, you know, giving a voice to this um, energy, this divine feminine energy that has been repressed, that has been rejected, that has been um, inverted in so many ways. You know, there is a real rising of this powerful divine feminine energy coming up, which also, um, you know, when we think about Medusa and the links to the serpent energy, the snakes that she had all over her head, there's a really strong link here with the Kundalini energy. Of course, serpents, you know, are feared. Again, in our stories, you know, they are made out to be very evil, but actually they hold deep powers as well of regeneration, of being able to shed their skin, of um and also of activating this powerful kundalini energy that lies in the base of our spines and once activated and released it will rise up to create this beautiful um connection with our higher selves with our crown chakra and to give us um you know an opportunity for enlightenment and empowerment which is kind of what you know the powers that be don't really want to happen but you know with this algal activation it feels like there's a really strong um, opportunity here for that to start taking place so you know we're likely to see or to continue to see over the coming um few weeks and months where we have been um controlled where we've been repressed where we have been um told stories that perhaps aren't true where we've been manipulated where we've been betrayed and of course you know this often is happening at a personal level and often i want to take that a step further and suggest that you know some often we project that outside of ourselves and feel that we are a victim but we are guilty as humans of you know believing everything that we think in our heads so there may be lots of lots of instances where you have or we have told ourselves things that are simply not true and so this is an opportunity to shift out of that and to become more empowered and to release the fear through doing so but it is also very much about this really strong powerful feminine energy 
rising up and wanting to be seen and wanting to be heard and being given a voice and being recognized for what it truly is rather than something to be feared which has perhaps been the case in the past is something that we can start to really integrate and work with and in doing so be become much more stronger versions of ourselves. Once we're able to look at the, what it is that we're fearing, you know, and we see it for what it truly is, it, it, it has to let go because fear can only have control and power over us if we allow it to. So again, you know, that is a very sort of strong message coming through. We're going to be able to see things much more clearly as we move forward. So if you have Algol in your chart, it's going to align with any planet or angle that is between about 24 and 28 degrees of Taurus in a conjunction or Scorpio in an opposition. We tend to use about a two degree orb fixed star and I would say for for me I would say if you've got any um planets or angles at 24 to 28 degrees of any of the fixed signs so that is Aquarius and Leo that is going to create a square so again that might be quite interesting energy to work with because squares can be really catalytic but it, they will be pushing you to work with this energy it's going to be quite hard to ignore it in your chart so um yeah if you've got any of those um if you've got algal in your chart you know these are themes that potentially you are working with at a soul level in this lifetime it's part of your blueprint but certainly you know this transit to the sun and mars and uranus is a collective transit so this is energy that is affecting us all and it's certainly going to really awaken us to some new ideas and some new ways of seeing things in our world so i hope you found that useful you can find about out about my work at spiralbright.co.uk um, you can sign up for my newsletter there. I send out a monthly one just sort of explaining a little bit more about what the energies are doing and what we can expect for the coming month. And um, yeah, please like and share the video if you find it useful and you know other people who are going to be interested in this content as well. So thank you so much for being here and I will be back with you very soon.